My name is Terry Green, and my brother Don, Donald Freeman Green, died on 9-11. He was a passenger aboard United Flight 93, and that was the plane that uh, crashed in Shanksville. Um, I, I can't tell you how lovely my brother was. Just an incredibly wonderful, nice man. It's such a loss to the world and to his kids, who are similar in age to my son. Um, who uh, my son was five at the t time, and uh, and his wife. Um, when Donnie died, I thought, you know, I was just really um, also struck when I was uh, watching media reports. Some of them were pretty horrifying about talking about uh, revenge. We'll get those people and and interviewing 9-11 family members and saying, you know, don't worry, we'll get them. And I was really struck by one woman interviewed who was looked as horrified as I felt and said, um, that's not what I want. Our family doesn't want anyone to have to feel the pain, anyone anywhere in the world of what we've been through. And I know for me it was just such a black hole in our family. I could felt I couldn't get out of, uh, see a future you know, for us, uh, that was the same after my brother died. And I'm happy to say that, you know, his kids and wife have been a, a total light <laughs> and brought, keep his spirit alive, um, as many who love him do. But um, uh, I know in his, in his memory, you know, he would, he spent his life uh, helping others. He volunteered with a group that flew cancer patients to, to flights. Um, he'd want the world to be better because he was in it. He wouldn't want his legacy to be that the hundreds of thousands who've, who've died in other countries. Um, and I also know, you know, I, I wrote a letter right away asking for compassion in his name. Um, I didn't join the group peaceful tomorrows right away. Well, partially not knowing about it. When I first did, I, I can't say I was totally sure about what our response should be in Afghanistan. You know, I knew there'd been such violations in human rights and women's rights. And, you know, uh, I remember the administration saying all the reasons uh, we needed to, to use military force, uh, which is sounding very similar now in, in Libya. But I, so I wasn't sure I knew enough to say no and um, uh, that it wasn't their approach. Also, you know, my family, my grandmother's family had died in the Holocaust. I thought about that and the need for response. Since that time, you know, I, I've seen the death tolls mount and mount in Iraq, Afghanistan. I've met uh, women from Afghanistan, the Afghan Women's Network, that's our partner who do not feel, you know, that, that women's rights have really been the focus and have been advanced and in fact very much at all, if at all, and are in fact slipping away what rights they may have gained and uh, because it, it doesn't seem to be the focus of our, our presence there. Um, I've heard Afghani youth and talked to them who are asked, well, you know, if we pull away, what happens? And they've said they've lived their lives, their entire lives, you know, 19-year-olds in war, and say, you know, it can't, they've, you know, lost loved ones, some to the Taliban, some to to, uh, to ally strikes, but uh, they can't imagine that this is getting them any closer to peace. They have not seen a better life and if we just spent a fraction a small fraction of what we spend on all of this weaponry and devoted it instead to true you know development and education and building bridges instead of bombing them I just think you know we we would have many more American lives many more lives all over the world that uh, we're in a much better place and have security quite Honestly, you know, my son, as I said, is a similar age to my brother's children, and I feel a responsibility to try to dedicate to getting at root causes and making a safer world. 
and it's not can't be just safer in rhetoric and it, and in sense of uh, strength as force. It has to be truly safe and secure because we've built built a world that's sustainable.